I'm a bit of a keyboard guy. Maybe more than a bit, I'm told that I have a fetish, but I can't help it, man. Mechanical keyboards just do it for me. So when Lofree got in touch to see if I was interested in their retro-styled mechanical wireless keyboard, I was all in. This is the Lofree Dot, which was made available through an Indiegogo campaign for $79 and retails for $99 after that. They sent me this review unit with no strings attached, and bearing that in mind, let me tell you this, keyboard drives me crazy! And not in a good way. It is the epitome of style over substance, beauty over functionality, and while there is a place for funky keyboards in my life as someone who enjoys funky things, this one does not cut it as a daily driver. But let's back up a bit first, because there's definitely some stuff to like here. For starters, just look at it. It's eye-catching, compact, and even a bit cute. Set this thing down on a table next to your sustainable fair trade doohickeys and locally sourced organic what's-its, and you're sure to attract at least 2.5 hipsters. Lofree says the idea was to marry a mechanical keyboard with the design of old-school typewriters, hence the rounded keys. But they also wanted a 10 keyless layout, familiar to users of Apple's Magic Keyboard, because of course they did. The dot was the result, and I must admit that it has an aesthetic that I superficially dig. Not just the retro-futuristic design language, but the glossy white on matte black color scheme itself. It pleases my brain. Although it does come in some other color schemes as well, and in the future it's supposed to have swappable key colors. And yes, it is backlit, featuring white LEDs with three brightness levels. I was pleasantly surprised with the heft as well, weighing in at 820 grams or a little less than 2 pounds. And combined with these non-adjustable rubber feet underneath its thick plastic casing, it is super sturdy. Now onto the keys themselves, which is a bit of a mixed bag. Falling from the good part of the bag is that Lofree uses Gatoron blue switches, which are nice and clicky. They're just a tad heavier to press down than my preferred Cherry MX Blue switches, so it didn't take long for me at all to get used to them in terms of input response. You've also no doubt noticed that the keys themselves imply macOS compatibility, but it has a sultry switch selection on the side for swapping between Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. This is also where you plug in a micro USB cable to recharge the internal battery or use it without Bluetooth at all. And yeah, that's the other big thing that drew me to the low free dot. It is a Bluetooth mechanical keyboard, which is something of an uncommon thing. It even lets you switch between up to three different Bluetooth devices using a key combo, like right here where I'm going from Windows to Android to Mac OS with ease. Granted, I can hardly think of a situation where you'd need to do this quickly, but it's nice that it remembers multiple host devices regardless. I also like the fact that the keys are concave, with the logical exception of escape in the spacebar, which makes it quite pleasant to sink your fingers into it while typing. Or gaming. I had no problem gaming on this thing either, at least when it comes to the Doom test. However, while it's aesthetically and technically sound and it plays Doom, there's a huge problem with the low-free keyboard that makes me want to toss it out a window. The keyboard layout itself. It's full of odd decisions that makes it uncomfortable and unfriendly to use, even after nearly a week of constant use. Just take a look at the space between keys, or lack thereof. Notice anything strange? While the physical measurements are the same as a typical full-sized keyboard, most other keyboards feature a key design that tapers off towards the top, making it easier to feel out individual keys while touch typing. But the low free doesn't have that. With the circular keys right on top of each other, it makes hitting neighboring keys a constant problem if you're used to other keyboards, and it's even worse if you have fingers bigger around than a Sharpie. Then there's the board layout itself, which is just... I don't even know what they were thinking. Those misplaced arrow keys are gonna give me post-traumatic stress, man, and good luck hitting that tiny right shift key every time you want to. Then there's the number row, which I never got used to. Again, let's refer to a typical keyboard layout. You see how normally the one is angled to the top left of the Q? Well, not on Lofree's keyboard. I assume this was for aesthetic reasons, but all of the keys in this row are shifted to the right, so I was constantly hitting the wrong key in this row. And finally, there's the shape of keys like tab, backspace, right shift, and caps lock. They're all the same size as regular numbers and letters, so hitting them while touch typing often leads to a moment of hesitation or a missed keystroke. And while the left shift and enter keys are nicely sized, it's executed in a bizarre way. Underneath these keys are two switches instead of one, something I have never seen before. And this means that not only is it twice as hard to press these down, but every time you do, it clicks twice, leading to a gummy, awkward feeling each time. 
Using this keyboard makes me feel cramped and unconfident in my typing, and I just can't recommend it for any serious writing or work. Yes, it has a rather unique look, but if that's your main concern, there are things like the quirky writer and the Hellboy steampunk that appear mighty similar. Or even the Nanoxia Incore Retro, which I received just as I was wrapping up this review, and man is it instantly ten times more usable to me. It may not be wireless, but it has a board layout that actually makes sense, and the keys are spaced out and shaped in such a way that I don't get that claustrophobic feeling I do with the low-free dot. It is $20 more expensive than the dot, but even a lower price point is not enough of a positive when it fails at its number one goal of being excellent at typing. For a hundred bucks, you can do a whole lot better when it comes to comfortable, accurate keyboarding. And if you enjoyed this video on this thing, then perhaps you'd like to see some of my others. I do more of them every single Monday and Friday here on LGR, so that's a thing. And as always, thank you very much for watching.